no doubt the 2023 general elections, especially a presidential race, will go down in the nation's history as perhaps the most keenly contested and intense political competition in the different major political parties, intense horse trading of presently going on. On Sunday, on this program, Professor Pat Utomi brushed aside the main parties, that is, the ruling APC and the nation's main opposition, PDP. He claims those two parties are more or less the same, and according to him, they have failed Nigerians. Everyone, let's begin the conversation, shall we? We're looking at the sort of leadership Nigeria deserves at this critical point. I'm being joined by a former Minister of Aviation in Nigeria under the Jonathan administration in 2017. It's Mr. Chidoka who ran for the governorship uh, election of Anambra State on the platform of the UDP. He later returned to the PDP party. He was part of its founding. Mr. Chidaka worked closely with Atiku Abubakar, who ran as the presidential candidate of the PDP in 2019 election and was one of the star witnesses of the legal contest put forward by the PDP. Mr. Osita Chidaka joins me from Washington, D.C. in the United States. Thank you so much, Mr. Chidaka, for joining us tonight. And let's begin the conversation. First and foremost, I'd like to get to know what is running through your mind when you hear Professor Partiton, for example, say, look, PDP and APC are more or less the same. Uh, they're like CME strings, and they have not done the nation any good. And the, uh, the Nigerian people should not consider these two political parties as any viable option in 2023. And it's pushing forward an alternative for Nigerians. What's your reaction to that statement? Thank you very much, Cheryl, and um, good day to the viewers. Um, first, I, Professor Patu Tommy is somebody I respect. He's a good friend of mine. And I understand his frustrations with um, the political setup in Nigeria today. So I can appreciate where he's coming from. But what is lacking is that he hasn't been a little more rigorous to figure out the difference between the APC and the PDP. And I'll tell you briefly what the major difference is. This is APC's seven years in office, and I would like to compare it also with PDP's seven years in office, the first seven years of PDP in office. At the first seven years of PDP in office, PDP had instituted a save and spend mentality. So when the oil prices were almost below $30 when President Obasanjo took over. By the time oil prices came up to $60, our budget was still at $33. If you look at 2006 budget, it was benchmarked at $33. And that gave, and that gave the bandwidth for us to be able to have the excess crude account. That excess crude account is what saved up the money to allow PDP government, the Nigeria, to exit the Paris debt club. That excess crude account created the buffer that in 2008, when the global economic financial crisis hit the world, PDP was able, the Nigerian government was able to weather the storm drawing from the excess crude account. The APC in the seven years in office have gone on to a borrow and spend philosophy. So from inheriting a debt of seven billion, they've gone all the way to almost 30 something billion dollars, which I'm hearing now, is almost inching to about $50 billion of debt. Now, if you look at the current discussion in Argentina, where the IMF is forcing Argentina to change its economic um, focus, they're asking Argentina to reduce the budget deficit from 2.5% of the GDP to 0.9% over the next two years. Now, Nigeria's deficit to GDP is at about 4%. So there is a clear difference between the approach of PDP in its economic policy, in its philosophy, that you have to invest in human beings first uh, before the massive investment in infrastructure, which started towards the seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years of PDP, where we started the power plants, the nine power plants, where we started the plan for the railways. But before then, PDP had acquired 22 hospitals in Nigeria to create the federal medical centers. Nigerians who walk into the federal medical centers today don't recollect that this was a decision of Obasanjo government. And these federal medical centers were created in states that did not have teaching hospitals. If you go to the issue of education, 
the PDP government started the National Open University. Today, there are about 500,000 students in National Open University. That tells you the number of people that are escaping from poverty through quality education. The private universities were not a thing that Nigerians knew about in 1999. By the time PDP left office in 2015, there were 67 private universities in Nigeria. So if you look at the policy framework of the PDP, you will see that there is a deliberate effort, not just to empower the citizens, but also to create the framework for a savings culture and spending when you have the money. If you look at the issue of sale of government houses in Abuja, that was the biggest wealth transfer scheme that the world has ever witnessed. When the government sold its own assets to its own civil servants, empowering those civil servants and removing, reducing from the government the maintenance cost that they have carried every year in maintaining public buildings. So if you look at that principle, you will see that PDP had gone towards a small government. PDP had gone to reducing the government by so, privatization, removing the government-owned public agencies, while the APC are doing the opposite. So if I were Professor Patu, tell me, what I should have been asking myself is, between the two ideas of PDP and APC, if you don't agree with it, you can go for a third force. But to say that they are the same or two sides of a coin um, is not correct. So in essence, the big question here will be whether or not your political party, PDP, is a real alternative to the APC or an option that Nigerians can pick from in 2023. And if that uh, is, uh, um, is in the affirmative, the big question is the, the kind of uh, or the characters or the personalities your party is putting forward in 2023, are they convincing enough um, to be able to weather the conversation of equity, fairness, and justice in terms of political balancing in the nation. Again, I will tell you that voting for PDP is a no-brainer for Nigerians if they want an equitable, fair, and just government. The logo of the PDP is the umbrella. And the idea of the umbrella is an umbrella that accommodates all. If you look at the PDP, we, we, we have suffered our own fair share of crisis of being in government and being out of government. So we've learned. There, there is not an Eldorado with the PDP. We've had our own issues. We've made our mistakes, but we've learned from those mistakes. The key thing you must learn about PDP is that in 1999, when PDP came to power, we graded the ministries into grade A, B, and C, 666 per zone. So every zone had a minister in grade A, in grade B, and grade C, creating a sense of national unity. PDP is the party that came up with the Fiscal Responsibility Act to say to the subnational government, you cannot borrow money as you like. If there are parameters for people to borrow money, which is still part of our spend, save and spend philosophy, as distinct from the borrow and spend which is APC. Now, voting for PDP will allow PDP to unwind the destruction that's happened to our management of national diversity. This, the APC government has been very poor at the management of national diversity. And the reason why they've been very poor at it is because they do not have the historical burden that PDP had. PDP had the historical burden of getting power out of the military and institutionalizing civilian rule in Nigeria. So we achieved that. PDP had the historical burden of removing Nigeria from a pariah nation, free the Abacha government and just a few months of Abaka government, and re-engaging us with the world. We achieved it extraordinarily. We re-engaged Nigeria with the world. We got Nigeria to see the world. We got the world to see Nigeria in a different format. So if you look at our historical burden, there is no way we could not manage Nigeria's diversity. As distinct from APC, who had to play up strong ethnic sentiments to win power at the time they were coming to power. So they are held prisoners by, their, by the configuration that brought them to power. So, both so of I, I like to put you in a very win. tight uh, situation here, perhaps put you on the spot. Uh, you are an Igbo man, uh, of course, you're a Nigerian, but of Igbo extraction. And I know that the conversation around whether or not 
um, the Igbos should have the presidency in 2023. It's come up over and over again. And we're going into 2023. Your party, for example, has said it will throw that uh, option open to every region of the country. As far as we, as we know today, it has not made a decision on where to hold, uh, to go in that respect. For your people in the Southeast region, has your party done fairly to the region? So, again, it is still the same politics that I'm telling you. I am a very strong advocate that PDP should zone its presidency to the Southeast. I am on a pivotal in that position that in the fairness, in building that Nigeria, when the Igbos came to the Constitutional Conference of General Bacha in 1995, it was Ekweme and the Igbo group that proposed the idea of rotational presidency. And we said at that time that it should be a president with two vice presidents, the vice president from the region of the president and the one that from the other region. So in the event of the demise of the president, the one from his region will have taken over. That would, not have, that would have allowed us not to have the problem we had with President Yaradua's death. Now, the second aspect of the consular conference request was that the rotational presidency will be a 30-year program with one term of five years each. So in 30 years, the six zones in Nigeria would have experienced the presidency, and then we can throw it open to the best candidates from any zone. Now, what has happened is that there has been discussions because President Yaradua died, and then the opposition won power. So PDP is in a kind of a dilemma. Do we struggle to win power first and continue our zoning as we have done, or do we continue with the zoning, even if um, that candidate may or may not win the election? So using my approach, my approach is that, first of all, the Igbo people will have to bring up a candidate that can convince Nigerians, because Nigerians are not party to these internal party zoning structures. But if the two political parties in Nigeria had taken a strategic decision to allow the Southeast to produce the candidates, what would have happened is that Nigerians will have made the choice, like we did with Obasanjo and Palaye, which of these Nigerians are the ones that can, who among these two people is the type of Nigerian we want to lead us out of where we are today? By so, making the race. So, invariably, uh, race, what is playing out, out is that it looks like your party PDP has lost hope in the Southeast or a Southeastern candidate to be able to win election for it. That is the dilemma. That is what is looking like, isn't it? That an evil man may not be able to win for the PDP a 2023 presidential election. That's what it's looking like, isn't it? It's a real and clear present dilemma that any political party will do because if you look at um, political parties across the world, at every point in time, um, I'm not sure Biden was the choice of many Democrats, Sanders was winning the primaries until they intervened to ensure that somebody that can defeat President Trump came on the ticket. So my attitude is that Nigeria has gotten to the stage where we have to create what I call that Nigerian center. That center where people from all ethnic groups who believe in Nigeria, who share the ideals of Nigeria, lose their ethnic identity and seen by the rest of Nigeria as Nigerians. So it is creating that middle that the country has a dilemma. Over the past eight years, we haven't created it. If we had created that middle, there would be no question of whether an Igbo man can win an election. What would be the question is whether that Igbo man that PDP is bringing approximates to that Nigerian center. The Nigerian center is a center that will be against the fundamentalism of Boko Haram. It will be against the separationist agenda of the Southeast, of those who push separation. It will be against the, um, the people in the Southwest or the Niger Delta militants. That center is what Nigeria will be creating if the two political parties decide that an Igbo man will be presidential candidate of the two parties. It will dawn on every Nigerian that for you to be part of that Nigerian center, there are minimum behavior that is acceptable to being a Nigerian. Now, so I understand the dilemma of the PDP, and I share in that dilemma. But the question I'm asking is that for us to build a nation, we need to bend backwards to build that nation. And I'm hoping that the two political parties will bend backwards to see that you cannot define Nigeria in terms of there is no Igbo man who the nation can trust. That means that the country has not built a middle. That means that the Igbo people that are serving in the military, giving up their lives, are not paying the ultimate price, are not being recognized for the work they are doing. 
That means that the Igbo people that are in the public service, spending 35 years of their life contributing to national growth, are not recognized for what they do for the nation, both in the intelligence services, in the military and paramilitary forces. We have all taken risk for Nigeria. And Nigeria needs to understand that building that center will allow us to, in the future, be able to say, let the best man rule. I am all the one for the, let the best candidates win, whoever wants to do. But we need that transitional period where we heal our national wounds, where we build that national center, and where we get all Nigerians to help us build that nation where no man is oppressed, to help us build that nation where no tribes and tongues may differ, in brotherhood we stand. And I think that opportunity presents itself to Nigeria at this time. So let me ask you, um, and I, I like you to be frank and uh, straightforward with Nigerians tonight, because millions of people who are watching you tonight are gauging and wondering whether or not they should stick with the APC or choose your party or maybe look for the third force or any of the political parties around ahead of 2023. But a lot of people uh, are talking about how they will galvanize the young people of Nigeria. So a few names have come up in your political party. The likes of the former gov I mean, the governor of Sokoto State, Amin Tambua. The name of uh, someone like uh, the governor of River State, Nyinsam Wike, has come up. The name of the mm. likes of uh, uh, the former governor of uh, Kano, uh, Kano State, Kwon Kunso, uh, his name has come up also. Um, we, we will look at um, uh, Atiku Abubakar, the former candidate of your party in 2019. And uh, Peter Obi's name also had, had come up. So the big question is, for you as a member of the party, a chieftain of the PDP, and looking at what happened to your party in 2019 and 2015, where the APC had given your party a bleeding, a bloody nose. Which of these candidates do you think at this critical time can give the APC a run for their money or any other political party that uh, may be in the contention in 2023? So, um, <clears throat> there's this dilemma we have in politics about personalizing uh, an election. So let me take it in two ways. First and foremost, the reason why any Nigerian should vote for PDP is that the PDP has a diversified power structure. We don't have that single individual who can take decisions on behalf of the whole country or who can direct the party to go one way or the other without the concurrence of the power blocks in PDP. So we have strong governors. We have strong presence in many states. We have members who are former ministers, former, pre um, former presidents. We have former Senate presidents. So PDP is a party that when the caucus of the party means, meets, no president can willfully take a decision one way or the other. So the diversified power structure of the PDP is the most attractive thing that Nigerians should be looking forward to. The fact that PDP states have continued to show that they can invest in the people, that they can make things out of nothing, that we can have a state-run airline running in Nigeria called Ibom Air, that we can build the type of infrastructure that we're seeing across the country in the states of the PDP, tells the country that we are ready to provide that leadership at national scale. Now, PDP is guided by his manifesto. PDP is guided by his caucuses. So there is no one individual who, if he becomes president, will totally alter the DNA of the PDP. That is why we look rancorous. That is why we look unorganized to people. That is why it looks like we are always at, it, at each other's throats because the power focus of PDP is diversified. Now, coming to the candidates, all the candidates you've mentioned, any of them will do well as a presidential candidate of the PDP because they come with experience of serving at the national level. They come with the experience of some of them serving at both national and state level. They come with name recognition. They come with the fact that they are no messiahs that they are not coming to Nigerians promising to be the be all and end all of Nigeria's problem. Rather, we are not relying on their personal um, capabilities. We are relying on the institutional framework of the PDP, combined with their personal skills to deliver a value to Nigerian people. So while the APC now is at loss because they do not have another charismatic politician like President Buhari, who is Nigeria's, one of Nigeria's major charismatic politicians. He has a strong base. He has supporters that are uh, across all the ethnic groups in Nigeria who still swear by him. So the APC does not have any person again with that kind of stature because don't forget, he was a former head of state. 
Don't forget that he has been in our national consciousness for a very long time. And now as president, many will argue he hasn't done as well as he promised, but he still has sizable followership. Nobody in APC has the Buhari effect. So what is key is that the election right. of 2023 is going to be an election of which party, which structure is able to deliver public goods to Nigeria. And I think PDP is the most qualified at this right. time to turn around the situation in Nigeria, reduce our budget deficit, stop this bleeding with our debts, um, work on the economy to ensure that people ultimately right. are the focus. Mr. Chidokabi, we're due for a break now, but I have one last question for you, and that I will reserve until when we come back from the break and we wrap up our conversation with you. Well, let's take a break, everyone. And when we return, I'll wrap up with Mr. Chidoka. But well, Mr. Daniel Buwala will be joining me here in our Abuja studio. And the dilemma of the APC party ticket gets our attention. He's a lawyer and a chieftain of the APC. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. We'll be right back. Our final moment with uh, Mr. Osita Chidoka, a former aviation minister and a chieftain of the PDP. My final question to you, Mr. Chidoka, is this. 2015, APC defeated your party. 2019, they defeated your party. A lot of people have argued that um, not that you will find uh, President Buhari staying on the sideline. He will be actively involved in the campaign. And the 10 to 12 million voters he's always carried with him might still come with him in 2023. We still hold the end of whoever becomes a presidential candidate of the APC. How will your party be able to stand against the APC in 2023? Just about 60 seconds so that we can wrap up. Well, I want to rely on data to answer you. In 2015, 2016, according to the NOI polls, Buhari was pulling almost 90% across all Northern states in terms of um, performance of the job. By 2019, he was pulling at about 60%. He had gone down in some states to as low as 50 something, 40% in the north. And that was reflected in the election results. In Kanu, his votes came down by almost, um, almost 20%. The, the quantity of votes he got in 2015 compared to 2019 across the north declined. So imagine what is happening when he is not the one on the ballot. The, the problem in Nigeria is that our social, our um, civil society have not focused on tracking data and information. If they've been tracking it, you will see that if there is a lowest ebb of the Buhari government, it will have been in the past two years. Nigerians are at their wit's end. So when I say he has supporters, what I mean by that is that, you know, of the 12 million, I am certain that about, you know, 30, 40 or 50 percent of those will still remain loyal to him as a person. But I'm not sure whether they will transfer it to continue this type of governance they have witnessed with insecurity all, all over right. the country, with the economic challenges facing us. So relying on that data, I can tell you that PDP as a brand, as the party that made Nigerians hopeful, as the party that put food on the table of Nigerians, as the party that said farewell to poverty, right. as the party that brought out the institutions Wait. that underpin our societies today will be in play in 2023 and we are the party to beat in 2023. All right. We need to leave it at that, uh, Mr. Chidoka. Former aviation minister and a chieftain of the PDP, Mr. Osita Chidoka, who has been speaking.